Welcome all wonders in one sight, eternity shut in a span, summer in winter, day in night, heaven in earth and God in man. Great little one whose all-embracing birth brings earth to heaven, stoops heaven to earth. My friends, the peace of the Christ child be with you always and Merry Christmas. Let us hear together the holy words of the Christmas gospel proclaimed in the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my friends, the story of Christ's birth is wonderful and it is familiar. Even in this present age, where the Christian faith occupies a less privileged place in the Western world than it once did, this story of the Messiah's birth is one of the most widely known, widely recited tales in existence. There are few among us who couldn't trace the basic arc of the story if we were put on the spot to do so, just like we could with any number of other stories, like Jack and the Beanstalk or Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty. Tell me the story, someone might say. A virgin girl named Mary was in labor, we'd say, and she and her betrothed, Joseph, couldn't find a place to stay, so Jesus was born in a stable and laid in a manger. And shepherds, who had been sent by angels, greeted them. That's the basic arc of the story. And just like any of those other well-known stories, we might want to sum up by saying, and they all lived happily ever after. But of course, happily ever after doesn't quite cut it, not in this story. There are many potential pitfalls when a story so profound becomes so familiar. There's a danger that we regard it as only a story, like so many other stories, like a fairy tale or a fable. A story that conveys a wider truth, sure, but just a story. Maybe not something that actually happened. 
There's another danger as well, a danger when we choose only to focus on those parts of the story that make us feel good, that give us the warm, fuzzy feeling we've come to expect at Christmas. A danger that we miss what is so truly remarkable about this story. And when that warm fuzzy wears off sometime around noon on Boxing Day, that we turn away from the story until it comes time to hear it again next year. As if the story of Christmas has no bearing on how we're meant to understand God and his love for us and understand ourselves in relationship with God in Jesus Christ. Understand where we fit into this story, in other words. So I ask you, as we celebrate Christmas, what would happen if we took the story of Jesus' birth out of the stained glass, out of the glossy Christmas cards, out of the Hollywood movies, and placed it in the world we know, in our own time? This year, at the suggestion of King Charles, Anglican priest and poet Malcolm Geith's poem, Refugee, was read at Westminster Abbey's carol service. I'd like to share it with you. Refugee. We think of him as safe beneath the steeple or cozy in a crib beside the font. But he is with a million displaced people on the long road of weariness and want. For even as we sing our final carol, his family is up and on that road, fleeing the wrath of someone else's quarrel, glancing behind and shouldering their load. Whilst Herod rages still from his dark tower, Christ clings to Mary, fingers tightly curled. The lambs are slaughtered by the men of power and death squads spread their curse across the world. But every Herod dies and comes alone to stand before the Lamb upon the throne. That's Malcolm Geith in his poem, Refugee. I ask you, friends, what if the savior of our race were born this very night, not in a stable in Bethlehem, but in a bomb shelter in Mariupol? What if God incarnate came into the world in the midst of the present cholera outbreak in war-torn Syria? What if baby Jesus was born to Maria and Jose as they made their way north trying to escape starvation and authoritarianism in Venezuela? or in a small Shanghai apartment whose doors had been welded shut under the Chinese Communist Party's zero COVID policy. How do we feel about it then? Are the earthy and unsettling parts of the story so easy to overlook that God incarnate was born in filth, that his mother and her spouse were forced to make a journey they didn't want to make because of the caprice of an occupying regime? that those who greeted the king of kings first were not wise men from afar, they came later, but the shepherds, the rough and tumble poor, at the very bottom of the social pecking order, eking out a living. That God came to be one of us and chose the most desperate circumstances in which to be born. That God himself was helpless and vulnerable, as vulnerable as any infant, that the Holy Family would soon become refugees, migrants, while agents of terror went about massacring innocents. Friends, actually the most remarkable part of this story is that they didn't live happily ever after. God came to be one of us, and from the moment he was born in poverty to the moment he died on a Roman cross, Jesus did not shrink from experiencing the fullness of our humanity. All of the worst that our humanity could throw at a man, Jesus received unflinchingly. All of the unkindness, the anger, the hardness of heart, the prejudice, the hatred, 
As the prophet Isaiah foretold, he was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. What I want to say is that this story shows us that there are no lengths to which God was not willing to go to show solidarity with us. That there is no suffering, no poverty, no plight, no lowliness of birth, no grief and no death. That Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, was not willing to endure with us. To show that in the midst of darkness, there always is the light of the world the light that cannot be extinguished, the light that the darkness cannot comprehend. And that, that, my friends, is the part of the story that should make us feel good. What should, what must cheer our hearts at Christmas and every day of the year in all seasons, that our God is not some aloof, otherworldly power whose ways we cannot know, whose being is wholly mysterious and alien to how we experience the world. No, out of pure love, God came down to be with us, to share fully in our humanity. And just as our humanity was grafted seamlessly into Christ's divinity by his birth, Christ's divinity was grafted into our humanity as well. We have recourse, my friends, to a God who knows what it's like to be one of the least of us. Are you poor? So was the Lord. Are you sick? Jesus knows the feeling. Family problems? Jesus had those. Feeling rejected and unloved? The Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Grieving, Jesus wept. Overworked and underpaid, come to me all who labor and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Confused, I am the way and the truth and the life. Lost in your sin, Jesus bore the weight of our sin on the cross. God knows our condition because he shared it. That helpless infant whose birth we celebrate, that helpless infant born in poverty is the one through whom we were created. The most remarkable part of the story is that our creator shared in his good creation, shared our humanity and did not shrink from any of it to show us that he, Jesus the Christ, is truly Emmanuel, God with us. Of course, the story we tell at Christmas is not just about the birth of a baby. It is about the birth of our salvation, what makes us whole, healthy, holy. And that is a living story a story that continues in our lives, in our souls, in our time, in our world. What's left to us, my friends, is to tell this story with every breath, to walk the way of Jesus with every step, to become the story that we tell today, that the world may see and know that the fullness of God's glory lives in Jesus, our brother, born once in Bethlehem, and born anew in each soul that will receive him. Glory to God in the highest, and amen.
joy and humility, let us pray to the creator of the universe, saying, Lord, grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the mystery of the word made flesh, hear us, Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the birth in time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory to the shepherds and magi, hear us, Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, Lord. Lord, grant us peace. By the baptism of the Son of God in the River Jordan, hear us, Lord. Lord, grant us peace. Grant that the kingdoms of this world may, be become, may become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, Lord. Lord, grant us peace. O God, our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem, May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds. Through him who is Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. May almighty God who sent his son to take our nature upon him bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. May God who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, 
give you his peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>